What's going on? This is David Whitney with Alpha Hulk Fitness. All right, I'm making this video because this is the most common question I hear asked by women. What can I do to make my stomach tighter? First of all, I just want to say, I think this probably isn't the best way to phrase the question because nine times out of 10, the problem usually is the stomach area is soft because there's fat in the stomach area. And I think we all understand we can't tighten up fat. So I think the best way to approach this is by asking, how can I lose the fat in my stomach area? And now this next part is like the most important part. I really want you to understand this. No matter what anybody else tells you, we cannot tell our bodies which areas to burn fat in. The way we burn fat is when our bodies perform a task, we use calories for energy. If we don't have enough calories from the food we ate, our body will tap into fat and use that for energy. But when we're doing the task, it's not about the part of our body that we're using to do the task that determines where we burn the fat. Let me just give you an example to explain this. If we're going for a long walk, we will burn calories from the walk, but we won't, but we won't be burning the calories in our legs. If you sit down to write a long letter, your fingers might get sore if you're not used to writing for a long time. But that doesn't mean you're burning up all the fat in your fingers. It just means you're working the muscles in your fingers or working the muscles in your legs when you're going for a walk. It's the same thing with our stomachs. You could do sit-ups until you're sweating and blue in the face, but your body's not going to tap into the fat that's in your stomach just because you're working your stomach muscles. It will tighten your stomach muscles, but this isn't going to give you the desired result you're looking for if you still have fat over those stomach muscles. And it's also not going to make the circumference of your waist smaller by building up the muscles in your stomach. Just think about it. If I build up the muscles in my arm, is it going to make the circumference around my arm smaller? No, it's actually going to make it bigger. So what it comes down to is eating less calories than our body uses over the course of the entire day. This is how we burn fat and this is how you'll end up losing the fat in your stomach. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, I'm already doing that. I'm on a diet. I'm exercising. I'm losing weight all over, but I'm having trouble losing fat in my stomach. All right. The reason for this is because there's certain areas of our body that are called stubborn fat areas. In men, these areas are the stomach. There's really only one area. In men, it's the stomach. In women, it's the stomach, thighs, and butt. The reason for this is because these areas actually have more alpha-2 receptors than beta-2 receptors. To make this simple, alpha-2 receptors signal our bodies to store fat, to hold on to the fat. The beta-2 receptors signal our body to release the fat to be used for energy. So if these areas have more alpha-2 receptors, that means it's a lot easier to store fat in these areas than it is to burn fat from these areas. So what ends up happening is we burn fat from all over our body first. And then when we run out of fat in all these other areas, we start burning fat in our stubborn areas. That's why it's not uncommon to see somebody who might look unhealthy skinny all over, but still have a little pouch in their stomach. And that's why I really recommend weight training, lifting weights. This will keep your body toned and looking healthy and nice and firm while you're burning off all the fat throughout your whole body and working your way into those stubborn fat areas. Another great thing about weight training is when we do cardio, we burn more calories than we do with weight training, but ca cardio doesn't build up our muscles to give us a toned look and also after the cardio session, we sit down, we don't burn any more calories from that exercise we did. With weights, it's different. Like I said, we tone our body and give ourselves the healthy look that we desire. And also, after the weightlifting session, we continue to burn calories. Because when we're lifting weights, we're building up our, we're, we're working our muscles. And then we build those muscles after the session for up to 48 hours. Now, Building muscle requires calories. For, so for the entire time that your body is building the muscle that it worked during that weight training session, it's still burning calories. This is called the EPOC effect. And it's about calories burned after the exercise. Cardio doesn't do this, weight training does. So what I recommend is doing weights every other day and then cardio in between on the off days. This allows us to build up that toned physique 
and to continue burning calories all the way into the next weight training session. And on our off days, we burn up a big chunk of calories during our cardio session. I, re I recommend doing an hour of brisk walking or riding an exercise bike. I really like the recumbent bikes, the ones with the backs on them, so you can sit back and relax while you're pedaling. This allows us to relax and still burn a lot of calories. Okay, so now, what can we do to, what does it all come down to about tightening up our stomach? What's the solution to the problem we have? Like I said, it's all about using more calories over the course of the entire day than our bodies consume. We can do this two ways. One, by increasing our activity levels, by doing things like cardio and weight training and just getting out and doing more stuff. Excuse me. And also, we can do this by reducing our calorie intake. We do this by figuring out how many calories we're eating and then eating less. Now, I have a video that explains how to set up your calories to be in a caloric deficit. I'm going to link that in the description box and you can check that out if you need to figure out how to set up your calories. All right, I really hope this video has been informative and helpful. And listen, please, whatever you do, do not fall for the fads, the gimmicks, the lies. There's so many people out there trying to sell you something and then there's millions of other people who have been hoodwinked and bamboozled and believe all the gimmicks and lies and they're going to try to tell it to you. Listen, there's no magic foods that are going to make you lose weight. There's no magic cleanses. You know what the best cleanse is? Drinking a healthy amount of water and letting your liver do the job it was designed to do. That's what our livers do. If we drink a healthy amount of water, it'll help our livers flush out the toxins in our bodies. Our bodies were made very well. God knew what he was doing when he designed us. You don't need to do some crazy cleanse. All you need to do is set your calories to be in a caloric deficit. Do enough weight training so that when you're losing weight throughout your body, it doesn't start looking unhealthy. You stay toned. And then if you see you're losing weight, just be patient. The stubborn fat areas are going to be the last to go. All right, ladies. Until next time. And like I said, I'll link that other video about setting your calories in the description box. Take care.